Hello, hello. Sorry for the internet issues. It's just, it was just a lot of internet issues. Hopefully, it was gonna be uh, better. Uh, like I said, I do want to apologize. Um, it still look like even though I'm streaming at 480p instead of <coughs> 180p, um. It's still through the OBS streaming. It still says I'm still going down. But hey, I'm still going to try to give God's work out if God is willing. Um, despite of all these internet issues and all these issues to storm. Um, so, um, and since we didn't get any prayer requests, I even then asked in stream. If people notice any issues, I guess it's okay. Um, it's starting to buffer for me a bit. It may be just my internet. Well, hopefully it'll be okay. AMD stream. I hope. Hopefully. Um, I was expecting to have internet issues tonight. I wasn't having any sort of internet issues uh, whatsoever. Um. So, I'm still going to try. I already did the songs. So, um, I'm still um, going to try. So, let's go to the Lord with prayer. Holy gracious Father, Lord, I come to your throne, Lord. Lord, prepare our hearts and open up our hearts to whatever you may have to say tonight, Lord. Despite of the internet issues that's going on, Lord, hopefully it will just be lifted for just in about another just at least an hour at least and then it can do whatever the internet wants it to be doing more because sometimes it could be best sometimes it could be bad it's just really unexpected lord and hopefully for the people that's on the other side hopefully they can get something from this hopefully it's not bad and hopefully they're able to hear what you have to say as well to them lord so, open up our hearts, despite of all these issues, try to be able to receive your word. And not only just to be able to hear your word, but to be doers of your word, to be able to put it into praxis. Don't let it just to be a reminder. Don't let it just be something we listen to on Saturday night. Help us just to put it into our practice, into our daily lives. So, I do all this holy grace tonight. A. Man and amen. Uh, thank you, AMD streaming, for letting me know a little bit. It's it's rough right now, but um, I'm still going to uh, continue. Um, and please update me if there's anything going wrong on y'all's end. Um, please, um, very well update me on what y'all what's what's going on in y'all's end, so that I can be able to see in the chat. So, um, we're in a time of Thanksgiving, and it shouldn't be just once a year, as people would just put it off to just once a year. You know, Thanksgiving is only once a year, so I should be only thankful for once a year, and that shouldn't be a thing. It, it really, it really shouldn't, and sometimes we need to put that smile on our face, have some joy, because... When we accepted Jesus into our lives, we have the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be full of joy. And then people's going to look at us and like, why Why are you not having problems? Why are you not having issues? You're, you're smiling like most of the time. Why are you happy? Why are you so happy? You must not have any issues going on. You must not be struggling with financial issues. You must not be struggling with parenting issues. You must be not struggling with anything right now you must be so happy but just because i have happy and joy in my life doesn't mean that i have issues you know just looking at the internet you know the best way to put it into the sermon to tie it into the sermon is i've been having internet issues the time i don't know why it's just it was working fine when i was just sitting there watching stuff just watching stuff it just seemed fine and all of a sudden as soon as I started to scream, it just went, and I was like, oh no, what's going to happen? And I tried my best to do it 180p, but now it's going back to 480p. You know, just because I'm happy and joyful, 
doesn't mean I don't have issues in my life. And if we look at list of things and look at list that's going on, our thanks should be bigger than our list of what's going on. Our thank yous should be all the way from California to probably all the way to Florida. Or maybe longer than that to stretch it out. You know, we got to shift our focus off of the off of the things. And be able to shift in what God. Shifting on Him. It's not completely ignoring the problems. It's not saying ignoring the issues whatsoever. We still acknowledge the issues is still there. We're still acknowledging the storm is still coming through. We're still acknowledging that. But when we shift our focus off of the pain, then it's not going to affect us that much. When we start to have a different focus, you know, I want to be a joy and happy ministry. I don't want this to be flat out boring going, okay, everybody, turn your Bibles to John 1 12. Let's begin to read. Like, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want this to be, you know, completely boring where it's just, you know, where everyone just goes like, all right, I'm just not going to watch this anymore. This is just flat out boring. This is dull. This is not entertaining me. You know, people only have a lifespan of 10 seconds. If this, if this Twitch streamer is not interesting to me in 10 seconds, I'm out. Peace. God. <laughs> But the thing is, I want to smile. I want to be able to have fun here, you know. And laughing is good for a soul. It cheers you up, especially when you're going through a dark space. When you want to watch, like, a happy YouTube video or just a happy, jolly movie, you know, or spending time that's that makes you happy. Laughing is good for the soul. So when you shift your focus off of the pain, off of that... And shift your focus onto him, then it's not going to matter that much. It's not you completely ignoring it, like I said. And there is so many things, like I said, that list, there is so, and when I say so, I mean there is like so many things to list off to be thankful. And I just want to list off 10, just 10 ways you, yes, you can be thankful for. If you don't believe me, <laughs> let's go if you don't really believe me. The first reason, the first one, we should be thankful that he is holy. He is perfect. He has never made a mistake. Nothing really, he didn't did anything. He didn't fall into sin. He was, he, it was like, wow. You know, and people as Christians will come buff up saying, like, because I have Jesus in me, that means I'm so much better than you. No. Just because I'm Christian and you may not, I'm not better than you. You know, I still fall short of his sin. I still do things that I'm not specifically proud of. I still make some mistakes. I'm not perfect. I'm not holy. Even though it says in this word, for it is written to be holy as he is holy. You know, it does say that in this word. But Christians will act so buffed up. So I'm like, you should see it worse than others. It shouldn't just be good. But Christians will act so boasted about it, so prideful about it. To say, oh, I'm better than you because I have Jesus. Oh, you don't? That means I must be like 10 times, 20 times, 50 times better than you. Right? No. Like, no. He is perfect. I'm not. He can change me. He can transform me. So can he kick you. He is better than you. He, Jesus? I even I'm looking at the screen because that's what my nose says. But Jesus is better than you. I'm not. And, and, and you know what the thing is? You know, you know what he, you hear from Christians besides you hear that? You hear, oh, there's nothing that God can't do. Amen, brothers and sisters. There is nothing. And that statement is part true and part false. Like, yeah, there's no mountain that he can't climb. But the thing is, God can't lie. God can't fail you. God can't do any of that. He is perfect. 
that's the thing. He can't lie to you. He can't. God has never told me a single lie. Unless, unless I'm reading scripture wrong. But I don't think God has ever told me a lie. I don't think God has ever failed me either. But he is perfect. And we got to be thankful for that. To start off in the verses, all the way over here, yeah, as you can see these tabs, that's how many verses we're going to be in here tonight. So, strap in. We're going in. So, we're going to start off with Isaiah 6, 5 through 7. Woe to me, I cry. I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen my King, the truth, the Lord Almighty, the one of the Sephiroth flew to me with a live coil, coal in his hands, which he's taken with tongues from the altar, with a touch my mouth, and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. You know what people do? You know what you know what people do? They say like oh, I'm dirty. I'm just gonna make you dirty. You know, if I see something you're putting your your life together, I don't want to be part of that. I feel like I'll mess up. And we start to feel that when we get you know depressed, sad. You know, we start to feel ways where. If I say, I don't I don't know the correct way to say this, I don't know the correct action. I mean, I see this person putting this life together, and I feel like if I just step into that moment, I feel like I will completely mess that person up. I just end up just hurting people around me. No matter what I say, no matter what I do. And sometimes I'm guilty of saying that. I'm not going to be sitting here saying that I'm wrong for not saying that. But the thing is... The, the coal, the coal, when he touched it, it didn't make him dirty. It didn't make him dirty. He became clean. You know, Jesus had a lifestyle. You look at the old, the New Testament, right? Look at the life of Jesus. He had a lifestyle of healing people, talking to people that are dirty, you know. And, and people who has disease like leprosy, if y'all remember... Whoever has the leprosy, it will spread like nobody's business. Unlike the uh, <laughs> the coronavirus. <laughs> but the leprosy, you know, once you catch it, you have it. Period. But with Jesus, it didn't make him dirty. It didn't make him dirty. It made him clean. Just like what's happening in these verses. Just because if you feel that way. He can make you clean. When you come to Him, you shouldn't be afraid because of what you did wrong. You know, what you did over there. You shouldn't just try to fix your life back up together before you come to Him. You can come to Him as you are. He wants to purify you. He wants to help you out. So you should be thankful that He is holy and that He's perfect. That is the one reason. That's just one out of ten reasons. Let's go to the second reason. That He is all-knowing. Shouldn't we be thankful that He knows everything? I mean, He knows that when you're hurting, He knows. When you're trying to deal with the next step of your life, guess what? He knows. He even knows about the people that you're even mad at. Yes, people, we, as Christians, we can be mad at people. But guess what? God can know. He can know all the details. I mean, look at Luke 12, 17. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. I'm not counting every head. I'm not I'm not doing that for y'all. Nope, that's not happening. Okay, you can count your own hair if you want to. I I'm 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 fine with my hair. I don't I don't need to count this. I think that may be too be too much. But God knows all the hair. He knows all the all the details. And it says, Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. 
And this can be a current this could be a very encouraging thing since he knows everything. But it can also be straight up terrifying. You know, things that happen in your life that maybe you're not proud of. Like first kiss. You probably don't want to say something like that. Or a terrible date. Or the most you know, you hear writing prompts or essay prompts of the most embarrassing thing you have ever done. You don't want to say that to people. God knows the most embarrassing thing you've done. You may not want to tell people that. You might not tell people, oh, there was one time in Walmart and I was in my underwear. And people's like, why, why are you, why are you telling me this? It's so you just ask the most embarrassing thing and, and they're like, you're okay. K with like say that's just an example. I'm I'm not saying that I did this. Okay, don't 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 sit there and say that I did that. <laughs> but I'm just saying that as an example, it could be a terrifying thing because he knows everything. He knows all the details you're gonna do. He knows your darkest and deepest secret. Yes, it is that far. That's how much he knows because he is all knowing. That is God. That is him. He is all knowing and we shouldn't be afraid if we let, let let's let's read this first again indeed the very hairs of your head are all numbered don't be afraid you are worth more than many sparrows so you should thank god that he knows everything you should be thankful that he knows what's going to happen in your life when you don't even know it. It could be such a blessing. But it can be terrifying because you don't know what's going to happen. It's all about that step of faith. Going in that direction. Out of faith. Out of trust. So we should be thankful. That he's holy. And that he is all knowing. And that he's also a purpose giver. You know, most questions people ask, what is my purpose? What shall I do? Should I just grab a controller? Should I, should, I, should I do this? Should I watch movies? What movies should I watch? I don't know. What's my purpose? God, what is my purpose for you in my life? What do you want me to do? I have been praying. I feel like I haven't gotten a single answer. God. Hear me, oh my soul. I don't know what my purpose is. You know, and people will ask that question. But the thing is, we, we should all know this. He didn't make you without a purpose. He didn't make you to sit there. Maybe I should stand because I am sitting. And doing nothing with your life. I mean, I, I won't say that I'm doing this, so, you know. Don't judge me just because I said that. <laughs> but we feel at times, though, let's let's be for real here. Because seasons change. Stuff happens in our lives. You know, things just go out of rat, whack. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who loved him. Who has been called according to his purpose. You may feel like, I don't have any gifts. I don't have any talents. I don't feel like my life is really going anywhere. And sometimes I feel that. Trust me, I do. There's times where, you know, you sit there and try your hardest. You know, you kind of just throw everything at the wall, hoping that something, just something, that would just stick to the wall. You know, you're hoping that, oh my gosh, I'm finally going to work. Yes. Amen. Oh my gosh, it's sticking to the wall. I'm actually, my life feels like it's going somewhere. And the thing is, he will show you the way. And you got to be thankful for that. He took time. He took time to knit you, to make you before you were even in your mother's womb. He took that time. Like, he knew that I'm a gamer. He, 
Keep probably knows that. <laughs> I mean, I know that. I'm, I'm sure that he knows that. You know, that I'm a gamer. I love to play on my Switch as this is a pro controller. You know, I love playing games. You know, it is what I enjoy doing. I mean, I play it a lot, but I love that. But thing is, he created you for a purpose. And I, you should be thankful. Thankful. That he is a purpose giver. And like I said, he is the way. He is our way maker. Now, I didn't play that song. I should have played the way maker song. Everybody should know the way maker song. I mean, I, I should have played I should have played it. <laughs> way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Come on, y'all know that song. I'm a terrible singer at heart, but, you know, he makes a way when there's no way. You know, he makes it where it feels possible, even though it may seem impossible. You know, he made me to be a minister. It seemed impossible. I didn't see myself as that. You know, but all of a sudden, poof, here I am. And he could do that for you. Let's go to Isaiah 43, 16 through 19. Let's read what it says. This is what the Lord says. He who makes a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, Extinguishing snuffle out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, in streams, in the wasteland. As you can see, he is the way. He is the truth and the life. That is who he is. You know, and this is a true statement. If we look at 18, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. A lot of people want to post that scripture back up. And you, let, let's look at the, the stuff, because that's a true statement. But look at the stuff before that. It was a miracle. You know, he split the sea. And he's like, nah, just forget what I just did. You, you just, you, you made a way. I don't dwell on the past. I'm making new things. God, look what you did over here. Look, you want you. And you're like, do not dwell on the past. I'm, I'm, and you're probably going to sit there. Okay. All right. And nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened. Except for the chariots and horses, you know, when they drowned. When they're going out to the promised land, when the sea was split, they were, they were sitting there saying, like, there's no way. And all of a sudden, God made a way. When it even feels impossible, 100% logically, even maybe statistically impossible. If it feels so impossible, and he sat there and made a way, and he said, don't dwell in the past. Look, there's new things. Okay. Alright, new things. See that he is the way maker. He's not just going to do it once and that's over. He can do it again. It's not just in the past. He wants to keep providing for you. He wants to help you out. When there's like a bank saying like, sorry, there's not much we can do for you. Our doctor, sorry. We, we tried everything imaginable, but this person... But guess what? You know what God says to that? He's like, I'll make a way. You know, and, and if we look at our lives, just look at our lives, examine it, there might be things where there's, it's just not explainable. You probably look at it saying like, how, that's not logical. How? Because it's through God. There could be moments where there's a sea, 
And it feels like you have nowhere to go. But he will make that way. He is the way maker. And we should be thankful for that. You know, you may not know when the next blessing is coming. You may not know what the future is going to hold. But you do know that there will be a blessing coming. And that should be very, very thankful for that. You should be thankful for that. You don't know when that, that next miracle is going to be, but I'm going to be thankful. I may not know what's going to look like. I may not know when it's going to happen, but I know that it is going to happen. Even if I don't know when or where or how, I know that's going to happen. And that we should be thankful. And another thing to be thankful is that God is patient. I'm not patient, as some people would, and I, I mean, if you if you want to say that I'm not, I would, I mean, that's probably a lie, but um, I'm not the most, I'm not the patient person in this whole entire world, I'm going to be, uh, I'll be straight honest with you, like, like, let's, let's give an example of, of my patience, you know, let's just give a nice, because he's patient, oh, oh, me, me with that word. Okay. Alright, me, me be patient. I mean, that's one of the fruits of the Spirit, ain't it? But when you sit there, how about we play Super Mario Super... Let me, let me get the game out. Mario Party Superstars that just came out, like, probably almost a month ago. And this game... Is a friendship destroyer. That's the best. That's the best way I can describe uh, Mario Party games, because it feels rigged. It feels rigged. Even when I play it, you know, I feel like it's rigged at times. I want to summon punch that monitor. I want to break this controller because that rage is kicking in. It's like I don't have patience for this. What happened there? What happened there? You know, even when you're going through a loaded screen. My gosh, you know, loading screens. You're just sitting there waiting. How well does your patience do during a loading screen in a video game? How well does that do it for you? Because it doesn't do it for me. I'm like, freaking load. I want to play the game now. I don't want to wait. I want it now. It's like that commercial. It's my money and I want it now. I do not want to wait. But guess what? God is going to wait for you. He's patient with you. I may not be. I may not, I may not be patient with you, but he is. <laughs> it, it says uh, in Psalm one three eight, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger. How can we not be thankful that he is slow to anger with us? That he is compassionate. You know, we can sit there and cuss at him. We can go into the opposite direction, but guess what? He's not mad at us. You know, he's not mad. He is slow to anger, abundant in love. It says it right there at first eight. And he's compassionate and gracious. So we got to be thankful. That is the fifth reason. You gotta be thankful that he is patient with you. And the sixth reason is to be generous. You know, looking for opportunities to give. Like I said in the prayer, it is better to give than it is to receive. You know, even back in the early days, I, I you know, younger self, I feel like it was the opposite around. You know, especially during Christmas time. You know, you are excited. You can't wait. You're probably very impatient at that age, wanting to open those gifts and wonder what it could be. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, an N64? Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure probably some of us are like that. Oh my gosh, a PlayStation 1? Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> You know, back then, it feels like it's better to receive than it is to give. But guess what? Jesus didn't do that. He didn't come down and just take, take, take from people. He didn't go, hmm, you got money? Let me take that. Oh, you got a ministry over there? Let me take that. 
He was actually given. He was actually helping out. And that's what we should do. And we gotta, and, and, and he looks for opportunity. That's just something we should be thankful for. He looks to opportunities to give to us. And generous doesn't just mean money. It's not a freaking dollar bill. It's something out of your heart that you want to give. You want to bless others. That's who he is. He is generous. It says in James 1 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. He doesn't sit there and go, Man, I see something you do wrong back there, you're not getting this. You know. You know, that's kind of like when you get back right. You know, forget about that freaking Sunday. Forget about that blizzard. You know, you're supposed to have A's all throughout the week. And I, I see this L. I, I, see, I see this L. You're not getting it. You know, probably a younger self. You know, these days you're going to be like, but thing is, God's still going to give. He's not going to sit there and look at all the wrong things you've done. He's not going to sit there and point that out. He wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. He is not looking for the reasons why you shouldn't have it. He is a giver. He is generous to us. And that is something that we should be thankful for. We should be very thankful for. I mean, look at Romans 8.32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? He gave us his son to die on the cross for us. Shouldn't we be thankful for that? And sometimes we'll abuse the generous. Let, let's be honest here. You're going to be like, well, God's so generous, then I should have a Lamborghini to drive to work, to drive to back. I want to have this nice Lamborghini. Oh, if God's generous, then I should have a mansion with a helicopter pad, with an indoor swim pool. You know, and some of us wants to be abuse that, but it's not. It is not. So that's the seven reasons. Seven. I mean, yeah, no, six. My bad. I missed counting. Six reason to be generous, to be able to thank you and be thankful for that he is generous to us. Even though we should be to others, but at least he's doing that and we should be thankful for that. The seventh reason that he is gracious. Ephesians 2, 8-9. through nine, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, but it is the gift of God. Not by works. See, see, it's right there. Black and white, not by works. Some people say it's works. It's right there. Black and white. Black, look, look, words in black, and it's in white. And people love to boast. Why not be thankful for the grace? Be thankful for things that you didn't even deserve. You know, you didn't deserve that Jesus died on the cross. But he did that out of love. That is, you know, you know, you should be able to wake up in the morning or afternoon if your sleeping schedule was whack. You know, and you should be like, I'm thankful. Even though these are things that I don't deserve, I'm very thankful that he's gracious and that he is merciful. That's another thing to be, to. that's another thing. That's the eighth reason to be thankful of his mercy. You know. Mercy resets. That's a, that's how mercy works. It resets. If you don't believe me, let's look at Limitations 3, 23, 22 to 23. Because of the Lord, great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never failed. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Every morning. It's like hitting the re reset button. You know, think about those old times. Where, where is it? Oh, here it is. My mini. Great way to show off the mini. You know, have this old Nintendo or a Super Nintendo. Let me actually get this. You know, a Super Nintendo. And you see a button right here that says reset. 
You know, games these days, you don't have that option. You don't have that option to reset anything. You know, game froze. Reset. Oh, the game's being buggy. Reset. <laughs> you know, just looking at it. It's like something happens. Your game is broken. You're like, reset. <laughs> it's like, oh no. I mess up on trying to speed run this old game, maybe. Reset. You know, and that's the same way here. His mercy resets every morning. No matter how many times you fall short, no matter how many times you fall into a sin, the, His mercy hits that reset button. Every morning. And you, we should be thankful for that. That He has so much mercy on us for our sin. You know, he could say, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to be. No, he still loved us. Yeah, there will be consequences for our sin, absolutely. But he still loved us. That is him. And I, we should be able to thank him for that. Thank him for the forgiveness for our sin. Thank him for the mercy that he has on us. The ninth thing. Ninth thing. Hey, look at that. We're almost to ten things. I'm about to prove you wrong because there's a million. There, well, yeah, a million reasons to be thankful, but I'm just listening out ten. Uh, the ninth thing is that he is a pursuer. That is him. Even when you go the opposite direction, like Jonah. I'm pretty sure most of us Christians have heard the story of Jonah. You know, the wonderful tales of Jonah, when he gets swallowed by a big fish, even though it's probably a whale like Pinocchio, but, you know, it says big fish, you know, because he went the opposite direction. You know, God still pursued him. Even, like I said earlier, when you're cussing him out, giving all this, he's still going to pursue you. He's still going to love you. It says in Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrate his own love in, for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While I was still living that old style, Christ pursued me. While I was still in the sin, Christ still loves me. He still pursued me. You know... And people will sit there and hate God, make fun of God, talk trash on God, but guess what? God is still going to pursue those people. You know, and people's going to say, oh, I got to put my act together before I go to Jesus. No, he is not waiting for you to get your act together. It's not like, oh, man, I have cussing issues. And this is a ministry. I, sh I, I mean, I shouldn't just go in there and cuss. And I'm like, come as you are. That's how Jesus is. Why can't we? Why there has to, like, yeah, we, there's places that has to have rules to keep the family friendly. But at the same time, they cannot know Jesus. Why should we get in the way when God is trying to pursue them? Why? And we all make these these rules where we're just getting in the way of what Jesus is trying to do. And we'll be able to bring them to Jesus, bring those people to him. And it's like, what am I doing? If we just look at ourselves, what am I doing to get in the way? Of God pursuing people. God can change people. I can't. I can only offer tools. I can only offer advice. I can give sermons like these. For people that need help. But I can't change them. I can't transform them. That's him. That is him. You know he sat at a table. Around with people. Who was so different. Why? Because he pursued them. 
And that we should be thankful for Jesus. It's being able to be thankful, saying like, hey, thank you, God, for pursuing me. Even if I may go down the wrong path, say the thing is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And alas, for no reason to be thankful is that to be thankful that he is ours, that he is mine. You know, being thankful that I am his child. And that I am his part of his family. Don't you thank God on a regular basis? Because I feel like that's what we should do. It shouldn't be just once a year as like Thanksgiving is. It should be a constant thing to be able to thank him. Look at John 1.12, the last verse here. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name and gave the right to become children of God. Let me read that first again. Yet to all who did receive him. It didn't say until you come to church. Until you stop watching porn. Until you get your act together didn't say that, but to believe in his name, you know, I want to build a ministry so that they say, thank God that he is mine, he's not just a big God that is just in the sky, he is my God, he is your God, he lives within us, we have the Holy Spirit, as followers, as disciples, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. We have a relationship with him. He is mine. I am his child. And he, he wants us, you and I, to be part of his family. Maybe these are things you didn't know. Maybe these things you just forgot and just take it for granted. Because there's things that we can take for granted. And that we should be thankful. And sometimes it can be it can be difficult to be thankful for. You know. Like being thankful that you have a roof over your head. That can be hard at times. Thankful to have food on your plate. That can be hard because there's people out there in the world. They may not have this roof. That may not have internet like I do. Well. Maybe on other days, not just not tonight, but, you know, some things we just take as granted. We take it as granted. And we should be able to be thankful. You know, be thankful that he is holy, that he is perfect. You know, be thankful for that. Be thankful that he's all-knowing. You know, be thankful for that. Be thankful that he is the way maker, our promise, our keeper, our light in the darkness, that he'll provide a way even when it seems not possible. Being thankful that he is at least patient with us, that he's not impatient with us, that he is, he is slow to anger, to be able to be thankful for that. Thankful for his generous, that he's able to give, to be able to help us out. You know, before we fall flat on our face, he doesn't want that. But sometimes that will happen to realize, hey, I don't want you to go over there. I'm trying to lead you over here. You know, and we should be able to be thankful that he is generous. And that we should be thankful that he is also gracious. That he is so thankful that we can be forgiven of our sins. Being able to be thankful for our mercy, for his mercy, not for our mercy, for his mercy on us. That he still loves us and he resets every morning. Night thing. 
to be thankful that He is our pursuer. That He is going to pursue you no matter what direction you go, no matter what step you're going to go. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Be thankful for that. And lastly, be thankful that He is yours. And these are just 10 reasons to be thankful. I mean, I mentioned thankful for Ruth, thankful for food. And it shouldn't be just once a year thing. It should be everything. And also, even if this was just a reminder, we need to put it into actions. So right now, I just want to pray for all of us. And hopefully you'll pray along, being able to take this step to be doers of His Word, to be able to be thankful. So let's go to God, and let's say Him thank you. Lord, as all of us come to your throne, Lord, we are thankful that you are holy. We're thankful that you are perfect. We're so very thankful for that, that you don't make mistakes, that you don't mess up. You never messed up on us when you crafted us, when you made us. And we should be thankful that you are perfect. We should be thankful that you're all knowing. It can be encouraging at times, but it can also be terrifying and scary. So help us to be thankful that you're all knowing, that you know what's going to happen next. And we shouldn't be afraid being able to take that leap, taking that step of faith. We should be thankful that you are our way maker, our promise, our light in the darkness, a keeper. That is who you are. And we're so thankful that you can provide a way. Even statistically, logically, there might be no way. But you provide a way. And we're so thankful that you're able to provide ways in our life. We're also thankful that you can be generous. That you give, that you want to help us out. And not only did you give us stuff, but you also gave us Jesus, who died for all of us. And that we should be really thankful for that, that we got that. Even when we don't even deserve it, we should be very, very thankful for that. We should be thankful that you're merciful on us. You can, you can be harsh on us. You could have. But you're not. And we're so thankful that you have our, your mercy. That you're able to forgive us. Of what we did. And that we can still pursue a relationship with you. And we're so thankful that you're gracious to us. We are very, very thankful. And we are thankful... That you are a pursuer. Even if we go in the opposite direction. Cuss at you. Make fun of you. But you're still there. You never left. Even if we're not Christians. We're all child of God. But hey. I'm thankful. For that. I am thankful that you kept pursuing me. Even when I have my back turned on you. All these things I am thankful. And I want to be able to be thankful that you are mine. And that I love you so much Lord. With everything that I have in my heart. That I just simply love you and adore you. And I'm thankful that you love me and adore me too. I'm thankful that you had never failed me. And that... You are mine, that you live inside of me, that I can have 
a relationship with you. And I'm so thankful that I'm born again. That I'm safe. Not through works alone, but through you. So I'm very thankful and hopefully people who's praying the same message to the Lord, hopefully they can start beginning this path of thankfulness. I do want holy Christian name. Amen. Do you feel thankful? Do you feel that way? Start making that list. We all have issues. We all have problems. But shift your focus to be thankful for what God has given to you. Instead of what you don't have. Is there any questions, comments, concerns, or inputs? Despite of the internet being haywire. Uh, it looks like it's doing okay. I don't know if it improved, but it looks like it's doing okay. Especially for 480p. Hopefully next week it won't be that bad, but internet changes. But um, is there any questions, any comments, any concerns about anything that I said here tonight? And also, if there's any prayer requests, if you have any prayer requests, um, anything. And while people may be typing that up, or maybe wanting to come into the Discord VC and say something, I do want to say a few things. If this is your first time hearing this, then we want to be able to congratulate you. We want to be able to help you with your journey. If you have questions like, what is baptism? What book of the Bible should I start reading? Uh, what is church? Who is God? What is the Trinity? You know, questions like that. If you have any questions, come into our Discord server. We would love to have you there. And also, like I said, if this is your first time accepting God, we would also love for you to fill out this form as well with as much information as you can. And if you want to, to be able to let us know how you are and help you what steps to take after receiving Jesus. We can be able to resource you to be able to help you out and provide you some advice, some tips to be able to help you out with your relationship with Jesus. Also, if you would like to donate, just DM me through Discord or whisper me on Twitch. If you would like to donate, if you have a PayPal account or something, uh, if you want to donate, I was like, uh, <laughs> but, um, this money will go towards the ministry. I don't care about money in my own pocket. I don't care, to be honest. They can go to stuff like having a physical building, stuff like that. If you want to support, um, this ministry financially, just hit me up. I'll give you that link, and then you could be able to donate. Um... Like it says in the Bible, it says it's better to give than it is to receive. Even if you can't help us financially, you can always pray for this online ministry. That's the best thing you can do. If you have no money, best thing to pray. I would love for you to pray for this money. I mean, pray for the money. Pray for the ministry money. <laughs> yeah, pray for the money. The money is sick somehow. You know, George Washington is coughing. You're going to see a corona mask. On George Washington on a one dollar bill. <laughs> that sounds stupid. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, if you want to give to help with this online ministry, however you're giving, we really support it and we're thankful for it. Um, so uh, with that being said, was there any questions, comments, or concerns, or prayer requests? Going once. Going twice. Alright, if there is nothing to be said, I do want to say this. This was a prayer request from my girlfriend. Her mom has been sick. She just hasn't been feeling well. I don't know all the ins and outs of what's going on in her body, Lord, or what's happening, Lord, but I, I hope that you are the healer, and he is the healer, and I hope for it. 
So hopefully she will feel better and I want to be able to lift her up. But with that all said, let's just go to the Lord and pray again. Just because we pray doesn't mean we can't pray again. So, humbly gracious my Lord, I come to your throne, Lord. Uh, Lord, hopefully this message speak to people's hearts. Hopefully they put that prayer into practice, Lord. So they're not just hearers of your word. Not just letting this be a simple reminder, but actually being doers. So hopefully we can start listening out things. That's a great way to start out. It's just listing things to be thankful. Just to be able just to list them out. So hopefully we can be able to do that in our lives. To be able to be thankful. Even if it's the smallest thing, we can take it for granted. So help us in our lives. It is, a, it is November, but don't let us just practice this once a year. Help us to do this every day. To be able to be thankful. And these are 10 reasons, and there's so, so much more that we can be thankful for. So help us to be able to start doing that in our lives. Whatever we may be going through this week of Thanksgiving, next week is when Thursday is Thanksgiving. Help us to be thankful for what we have instead of what we don't got. Help us be thankful that we can at least be surrounded by people instead of being alone. Help us to be able to say that. And hopefully we're able to take it into our hearts. Lord, I want to lift up my girlfriend's mom. I don't know what's going on, on with her. But you, Lord, as you're all-knowing, and you know all the details, you know what's wrong with her. So hopefully you'll be able to heal her. Mend her, fix her, so that she can be able to do more work for your kingdom. You know what's going on with her, and I believe that you can heal her. So be with the family, my girlfriend's family right now. Like I said, I don't know what's all going on, but her mom is just not doing great. So, we lift her up to you. Have your way. Have your way in all of us, not just her mom, but in all of us. I do his holy grace name. Amen and amen. Hey, guess what? This doesn't end our time here. No, no, no. No, 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 no. It doesn't end our time here. We do go into the Discord. I did put up the link. I did put up the link. Did I put up the link? Yeah, I did. The link is, the link is, the link is like down here. Yeah, yeah, down here. The link is that uh, second link with the Discord link. If you would love to join our fellowship hall, that is where we're in fellowship. That's where we come together. Um, if you need some prayer and maybe you're just too scared to put out your prayer request and you just won't want of us to pray with you alone and not publicly, come into the Discord. We would love to help you out. And like I said, if you have any questions about the Bible and and God and all that sort of stuff, come into VC. I would love to answer your questions as I can to be able to help you out on your journey with Christ. Or if you just want to come in here, chill, um, Random shenanigans, maybe gameplay, uh, talking, you know, just having a good time, having a good laugh, smiling, and having the joy in our hearts. So I hope to see y'all on the Discord server. Sorry about the internet for tonight. Hopefully it'll be better next week. Uh, hopefully we can cross fingers and hope. Like, just, just, just hope for the internet to work better. Just, just, so, um... We'll, we'll definitely see, but I hope to see y'all guys and girls soon. Take care. God bless. And I hope to see y'all on Discord server. If not, I'll see y'all whenever I see y'all. I'll be back Monday for Reunify. So, 4 p.m. So, like I said in the announcement, if you want to come to those, come check them out. Monday, 4 p.m. live right here on the Twitch. 
So I'll see y'all guys and girls soon, whenever that will be. Take care. God bless. Have a good rest of the weekend.